So, uh, certainly, the firms need to use different inputs in the production process. And we categorize all these inputs into two categories. One is capital. The other is labor. The difference between them is that in the short run, capital is fixed. In the short run. In contrast, labor is freely adjustable. In the short run. In the long run, both of them are adjustable in the long run. So we have production function Q is output, is a function of capital and labor. Okay. So now the issue we want to ad address is how many units of capital, how many units of labor should I produce such that in order for me to maximize the profit. And let's solve these problems graphically. For this purpose, we needed two tools. One is called asset cost. The other is called asset cost. Let's look at asset cost first. So let's, let's look at capital labor. So I'm going to put capital on the vertical axis, labor on the horizontal. And I'm going to pick, randomly pick one point. One point, one point on the space here represent a bundle of capital this many, a bundle of labor this many. And I'm going to call this point A. Starting from point A, I'm going to say, okay, if I cut the capital by one unit, and so, one unit. So if I do anything else, then my output will decrease by a certain amount. And by definition, we call this marginal product capital. Okay. Now I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to, in compensation, I will increase the lab labor by X unit. We want to, later on, we are going to find out what X is. Okay. X unit. So reach it at point B such that we can produce the same level output. Okay, let's say this output is 100 units. Okay. Okay, uh, so at B and a, at bundle B and bundle A, we can produce the same unit output. Okay, from B, let's say I cut another cut capital by another one unit. In compensation, I increase a certain unit of uh, labor so that we arrive at point C, and at point C, we can still produce the same 100 unit output. So now the question is, from B to C, I'm cutting one unit of capital, should I increase more than X unit, previously is X unit, right? From A to B is X unit. So now should I increase more like X unit of labor or less than X unit of labor or exactly X unit of labor? So here we should increase more like X because of low diminishing return. Compared to B and C, at C we are using fewer capital, more labor. So the marginal product of labor becomes lower than B. So now to compensate the one unit uh, decrease in the capital, we now need a more, need a more units increase in the labor. All right, I can repeat this exercise for many, many times. I get many, many points. I link all these points together, then I construct what is called isoquant. And this isoquant corresponds to 100 units of output. Okay.
several observations we are going to have here. First observation, the shape. We see that it's convex, convex towards origin, the origin. Or it's bowed towards origin. And this is because of lower dimension time. Second observation is the slope. Let's look at the slope. Okay, I'm going to draw another diagram. This is an isoquant, and this is from point A. And from B, from point A, I cut the capital by one unit, and then increase the capital by a label by x unit, and let me label this point as C. So now we can form a triangle. Let me see. The slope can be measured by the slope here can be measured at 1 over x. So let's find out what x is. So from A to C, we hold the labor, the units of labor constant, but reduce the capital by one unit. So the change in output from A to C is equal to 1 times marginal product capital. So it's just marginal product capital. Okay. Then from C to B. So now we are holding capital constant, the unit capital constant. And, and increase the labor by x unit. So for one unit of labor increase, the extra output by definition we call it marginal product labor. And all together we have x unit, so x times this. So this is a change in of output from C to B. And we know that the output at A, bundle A, is, is the same as output bundle B by construction. This will imply that the change in the reduction of um, output from A to C will be the same as the increase in output from C to B. So this implies that MBK is equal to X times MPL, or divided both sides by MPL, x is equal to MPK over MPL. So now we see that we, we, we work out what x is. So it's 1 over MPK over MPL. So multiply, multiply both top and, bo top and bottom by MPL. This cancel out with this. So we get MPL over MPK. So the slope here, we see that is MPL over MPK. So, and this, by the way, you want to pay attention to which one is, is on the top. Which one is a numerator? Which one is on the bottom denominators? Okay, here I'm putting capital on the vertical axis, labor on the horizontal axis. So MPL is on the top, MBK is on the uh, bottoms. And we have a particular name for this. This is called marginal rate of technicals. Substitution. 
or MRTS. Okay, that's the second observation. Third observation. Let's look at these two isobot. AMD. <laughs> so, not surprising, or, or it should be clear here that B represents a high level of isobot because they're using more resources, more more capital, more labors. Okay. So isoquant is increasing in this direction. In this direction. The further out from the origin, the high level of um, output it represents. Okay, that's the isoquant. This tend to iso cost. Okay, on the firms, I want to produce output, I need to purchase inputs for this purpose, for the production. And we categorize uh, all inputs into two categories, capital and labor. Let's say the price of capital is R, which is, which, is, which is rental rate, also called rental rate. The price of labor is W, or wage rate. And my budget is TC, total cost, okay? So I can spend my budget on purchasing K units of uh, capital, which each unit costs me R dollar. So all together is R K dollars. All higher L units of workers at wage rate W, so that's, that's the cost of associate with uh, the labor. So total cost, this is the equation. This is this is the total cost equation. Total cost consists of spending on high capitals and spending on uh, high workers. Okay, let's draw the as a cost um, curve or line. So same as before, we are going to put capital on the vertical axis, labor on the horizontal. So now, if I spend all my budget, all my TC dollars on capitals, I can hire, and which means zero labors, I can hire TC divided by R units of capital. One unit cost me R dollars. Altogether, I have TC dollars, TC divided by R. Similarly, if I spend all my budget on labor, I can get TC over W units of labor. Think all this point together. We got the ISO cost curve. Okay, um, four observation years. First, it's a straight line. The shape. Or it is linear, linear function. Capital in this space, capital is a linear function. Labor. Secondly, slope. So slope here can be measured by this length, the length of this side divided by the length of this side. So it's equal to T C over R divided by T C over W. This cancel out. So we get W over R. So this slope measures the relative price of these two inputs, okay? And again, you want to pay attention to which one is on the top. So here, W is on the top, R is, is on the bottom. And this is because I'm, I'm putting capital on the vertical axis, labor on the horizontal axis, okay? Second observation. Third observation. Again, it's increasing in this direction. So, which means that, say, suppose we have these two labels of as a cost, this one, this one, and B. So, the cost associated with B, or the cost, total cost represented, represented by as a cost of B is bigger than this. Like Fourth observation.
No, suppose. Okay, we have this as a cost. Suppose rental rate unchanged and wage rate goes up. Then what will happen to the curve? Okay, if the rental rate is unchanged, so if I spend all my budget on capital, I can still purchase this many units of capital or hire this many units of capital. However, if because the because the wage rate goes up, previously if I spend all my budget on labor, I can hire this many units of labor, but now I can only hire this this many units. This many units of uh, labors. So the new asset cost curve is this many. So we see that this asset cost curve rotate. So asset cost curve rotates inward towards the origin. Okay. So the fourth observation is that if with um, W or rental rate change. And well, one, one word changes, but the other does not change. Then, then we can also cost curve can rotate. All right, so let's uh, ISO cost curve. Now we have two tools in hand, ISO quant curve and ISO cost curve. Then we are ready to answer the question on optimal usage of the capital labor. So let's put them together. So this, this is ISO cost curve. Okay, in order to answer that, uh, in order to answer the questions, we can actually think from two directions. One direction is is fix a budget, fix a budget, and find the highest possible level of output. Okay, we can do this. So I'm going to draw several ISO quant here. And let's say we have three points here. Point A, point B, point C, point D. So given this, which point or which combination of the inputs should I use? A is on the highest level as a quant, highest level output. What is the issue here is that it's not affordable to us. It's outside our uh, ISO cost curve, not affordable. This part is to present the high level output, so A is not feasible. C is on our as a cost curve, so one is affordable to us. However, it is at a low level of ISO quant curve. D again, D is below the ISO cost curve. So it's also within our budget, so it's affordable. However, again, similar to the, to C, is at a lower level of ISO quant. So the choice, the optimal choice, is one of this point B. So 
What's special about B? At B. We know that isoquant. We can observe that isoquant is tangent with isoquant. By tangent, by being tangent, which means that the slope, slope of isoquant. is equal to the slope as a cost. The slope as a quant, as we see it previously, is MPL over MPK. Again, uh, a reminder here, here is that pay attention to which one is on the top, which one is on the bottom. Slope as a cost is W of R. We arrange the terms, we can see that, okay, MPL over W is the same as MPK over R. So here we arrive at our solutions. We should choose the bundle, choose the units of capital, choose the units, units of labor, such that uh, the, MP, the marginal product over the plus is equalized. Okay, that's that's the that's the solution. Okay, um, here's one exercise for you. Suppose if rental rate unchanged and wage rate goes up, how will the firm respond? You can, you can find the answer to this uh, using the isoquant, isoquant. Without doing any analysis, let's think about this intuitively. So now on the firms, I'm faced with capital labels. And I find that labor in, price of labor increases. Labor become more expensive, which means relatively capital is cheaper. So my response should be, I should use more Capital, less labor. I should substitute away from labor to capital now. And you can use the, this as a, as a cost, uh, graphical tools to uh, confirm this point. Okay, uh, let's as a, as a cost. So the way we, now we have fixed the budget, fixed the cost levels and find a higher level of um, the highest possible level of output. Equivalently, we can also think this way. Let's say I'm going to fix a labor output or fix the ISO quant. Find the lowest or lowest possible. Combination of KL. So here we are actually we are actually thinking in terms of minimizing the costs. Okay. Subject to the condition that we want to achieve this level of it. Let me draw it here. So we want say Produce 100 unit output. So let me give you. Uh, no. Okay, this 100 unit output. So let's say. Let's say let's have four bundle here. Bundle A, bundle B, bundle C. Mm. Bundle uh, D. Uh, let's say bundle D. Okay. So given this ABCD four bundles of capital labels, which one should we uh, choose?
So let's look at one of them, one by one. A bundle A. Well, it is it is on the it is on the lowest level of asset cost. It's cheapest. However, can we using bundle A? Can, can we achieve the target of producing one unit of No, we can't. It's lower lower lowest cost, but can't produce. 100 unit output. So this is not what we want. Bundle B or bundle C, let's look at bundle C first. C is on the, on the 100 unit ISO quant. So we can use bundle C to produce 100 unit of ISO quant, which is fine. However, compared with B, it is, it is on a higher level of ISO code. So, so bundle C, we can produce 100 unit output, however, it's, it's expensive. Bundle D is, uh, is not what we want, because at bundle D, again, uh, we cannot produce 100 unit output actually. Okay, we are, we are going to produce more than 100 units. Can't meet our target. Can't produce our target. Our target of 100 units output. So B is the is the choice, the optimal choice. And similarly, as before. We see that at B, those isochron, the isochron, the are tangent with each other. By tangent, they, 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 are, they have the same stuff. So again, we arrive at the same uh, solutions, MPK over R is equal to MPL over W. So, so, so now you see that we try, we are tr we're trying to find the optimal uses, the optimal uses of inputs from two, 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 two angles, and we arrived at the same solutions. So it's, it's one angle, we are thinking in terms of uh, fix the budget, fix the cost level, choose quantity, choose, quantity, choose uh, uh, a combination of uh, inputs to give you a highest level of uh, output or highest profit. Here we are doing doing something like profit maximization. On on the second angle, we are saying that okay, I'm going to fix a labor output, and choose the the cheapest bundles that can produce that our target output. And in doing so, we are actually choosing the bundles the of capital labor to minimize the cost. Okay, and these two problems are dual to each other, and we can see it here. They, in the end, we, we arrive at the same solutions.